Hello, I wanted to show you this, a video distribution amplifier that is part of a new project I'm doing to build a 10 megahertz reference for my lab. I bought this on eBay for $37. It has 100 outputs, it has 10 inputs, and I'm really looking forward to seeing exactly how good it can do uh, for a 10 megahertz reference. Video signals are very wide banded. Uh, typically, you know, five to seven megahertz is the carrier and then you've got a lot of bandwidth beyond that for sharp edges so usually a video distribution amplifier can handle a 10 megahertz signal pretty well in fact these are specified as having 100 megahertz of bandwidth so that's probably why this is a really neat unit as you see it's got redundant power supplies and it's a card cage what that means pull this off and you can see all the individual cards in there. The cards can come out pretty easily. And you can see what's on them. The single-sided circuit board. It uses a current feedback amplifier right here, this op amp, which is a uh, LM6181 from National Semiconductor. And that drives two transistors, these are BJTs, you can see the diodes here for the basic uh, class AB biasing resistors at the current levels. And what are these? These are uh, ST Micro 2219A and uh, 2905A. So that's what these, these guys are here. And uh, you can see they're just wired to the, uh, the 10 output. So you have one stage driving all 10 outputs. These are 75 ohm resistors. I could change them to 50 if I need to. Power supply is plus or minus eight volts. And I've measured the input here. This is about uh, plus or minus 14 coming in. So that should give me a lot of flexibility for what I plan to do, which is to add a built-in ovenized 10 megahertz reference. Uh, the way they did this circuit, it's not really a high frequency design. You can see the input coming here off this long trace going through this uh, 22 microfarad tangle of all things, 22K termination. So it's AC coupled and it's designed for daisy chaining. That's why it's high, high impedance here. And they've got this lovely antenna trace here over to the gain pot. Um, it's a current feedback op, op amp, which is kind of cool. And the uh, error correction happens around the whole loop of the circuit. So there's a trace coming from over here by these guys that goes back around like that. That's the feedback. So kind of interesting circuit to look at. Looks like they sold these with uh, several different models of cards. I couldn't find exactly this schematic, but it's really easy to see what it is. I mean, there's nothing going on here that's unusual or hidden. The manual says you can put them in live. I don't know if it's that great an idea, but I'm going to do it. Uh, the two AC supplies come in here like this. They're both rectified, and then they combine together and make DC. So either one of these can go out, and you've still got power. I think this is a really good uh, frame for doing modifications and adding things. So I'll probably add a card to do divide by two because some of my equipment needs a five megahertz reference. And I may even do a TTL output one. Uh, we'll see. So let's test this thing out and uh, see what the actual bandwidth really is. So I'm gonna hook, uh, I'm gonna hook one of these channels up into here. This is a Marconi uh, 2947 communications analyzer. So where it says antenna, this is the input. Put that on here. And we'll just pick uh, one of these guys, say I'll put right here for the tracking generator. Go from right here over to right there. So we're coming out here, into here, out of here, back over to there. 50 ohm terminator on here. All right, so let's go to the spectrum analyzer. Ignore that for a minute. Let's put the start frequency at one megahertz and the stop frequency at 100. So there's your noise floor of this instrument and whatever else is going on here. I'm gonna turn on the tracking generator. I'm gonna put the level at, uh, oh, that should be good, zero dBm. Now we'll just turn up the reference here. Now that's very interesting. It's got a, a pretty big peak there. The scale we're looking at 
is, let's see, what's our scale? 10 dB per division, so that's about a 10 dB jump. And where is it? Let's see. That peak is at uh, 57 megahertz. And then we're back down to unity gain here at 66. And this whole business starts at uh, 36 megahertz. So there's a little resonance or something going on there. But at 10 megahertz, we're here, we're fine. Looks pretty good there. Why don't we zoom in? Let's see, start frequency, 5 megahertz, stop frequency, 15 megahertz. Yeah, I think that will work just fine. Why don't we uh, check out the waveform and the headroom. For this test, I'll use uh, this HP 8647A as a generator, frequency 10 megahertz, amplitude 0 dBm, and we'll, we'll look at the amplitude range that it supports in a minute here, but we'll start with this. And what we'll do is we'll return the signal into the scope here. Let me grab a 50 ohm terminator real quick. Alrighty, there we go. I'm going to turn on the RF. There it is. Zoom in a little bit. There is your signal. You see the frequency reported correctly. Looking at, um, let's see, 1.65 volts RMS. That's a lot lower than what I want to use normally, and you can see a little bit of noise on here. So let's bring it up to uh, quite a bit more. Let's go to 6 dBm amplitude, 6 dBm. Yeah. Okay. There's 6 dBm coming out just fine. There we go. 10. 10 dBm, about half a volt RMS. Looks pretty good. What we should do next is look at the spectrum coming out and see if there's very much distortion. So let's do that back on the analyzer. There, of course, is the 10 megahertz fundamental. Nothing surprising there. Let's increase our span a little bit. Uh, let's go out to 30 megahertz. Uh, 35, actually. There we go. Not bad. But we need to uh, mess with it a little bit to see it more accurately. Yeah, there may be a little something down there. See those? To see it better, we can uh, change the bandwidth. There we go. So right there, that's a 10 megahertz. That little bump here is at 20. And there's 30 megahertz. Uh, Minus 45 dBm there, that doesn't really mean a whole lot. But right here, this, minus 34 dBm, and we're coming in at uh, plus 10. Oh, 10.6 actually. There, coming in at 10. So, yeah, it's got a little bit. Not much though. Minus 39. We can actually center here on 20 megahertz. 20 megahertz span, one megahertz. There it is. Not much, there we go. Back to the marker. Yeah, it's at 39, 38 dBm. So, you know, call it almost 50 dB down from the input. I think that's pretty good for distortion. Let's check and see what the dynamic range is on the scope again. For this test, I need a lot more output. My RF generators don't really go that high. So what I'll do is use a little test oscillator up here. And we're just going to worry about the, uh, the output voltage swing that we were able to get. And we can infer what the input was from that data. Okay, so after a suitably long warm-up time, we can see that we have 
signal here, about half a volt. I'm running 100 kilohertz in. I'm not terminating this because I think at this low of frequency that's okay. And I need to do it anyway because I don't get enough level otherwise. Crank up the level here. Now we're at uh, volt RMS. I think it's specified to do that. Um, there we go. So we start to see the distortion, right? And we can, ooh, nice and gross looking, right? Uh, before we see the distortion, mm, right about there is as high as I would ever push things. And that's about 1.5 volts coming out. Terminated to 50 ohms, of course. Uh, which is about plus or minus two volts, peak to peak. If we take off the terminator, we can kind of get an idea of what the circuit's really doing. Yeah. So that's going to plus or minus five volts. Plus or minus five volts from an eight volt source makes about sense, right? If we go higher, yeah, we see that. So that means the op amp and the uh, the circuit board that we saw in there is capable of doing uh let's see about two and a half volts within the rails and of course you terminate it and you get half as much yep there it is i just happened to notice another thing and i wanted to show this off if i bring this down to uh say a volt or so so volt to volt peak to peak terminated and let's do an FFT. For an FFT, you really want to give it as much data as you can. So let's do that. Turn off the display. Turn on the FFT. There we go. You can also see the harmonics here just a little bit. What I like to do look at the first 100 kilohertz. This is where you can see things like power supply noise, switchers, microcontrollers, whatever else is going on. That looks pretty clean for what it is. If I take off the termination Then you see some more stuff. And that's this little guy dancing around here. That's some kind of low frequency ripple. It could be some instability or uh, some power supply leaking through. But when we terminate it, even if I put the terminator on the unit itself, on another unused output, it drops back down like it should. So another reason why to terminate your outputs. But really, uh, maybe something to look at further as we dig in more to the circuit. That's about it for now. Uh, future plans are to put a 10 megahertz oscillator right inside here. I have a double ovenized uh, 10 megahertz reference coming in. And I also want to put a divide by two circuit in another card for a five megahertz output for some older equipment I have that uses five megahertz. So I think this will be a fun project. Uh, these cards are you know, pretty spacious. I could put a lot of things on here. Got 14 volts unregulated to work with, which I can move down to uh, 12 easily for the reference. So yeah, I think it'll be a fun one. So you're going to want to watch that when that comes out. Thank you.